I have been putting this video off for a very long time because it's uh, honestly, it gets real confusing real fast. And I've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off until I finally realized, you know what? You just, you can't outrun time. We're talking about run times. Run times is a very confusing term. Uh, for one thing it's used, sorry, I'm flipping through my notes. For one thing, it's used in two different ways. The first way we use it is as a phase, right? Run time as opposed to compile time, right? That's pretty self-explanatory. Compile time, you bake the cake. Run time, you eat the cake, right? Pretty easy. But what about a run time? Like the, the Node.js run time, what are we talking about? Well, really run time is short for run time systems or run time environments. It's effectively a layer on top of the operating system and it's a set of services, okay? And there are eight different, let's call them responsibilities that a runtime generally takes care of. Now, it might be a little bit different between languages, but I think overall, this is a pretty good overview of what runtimes do. Responsibility number one, memory management. This is all about real estate, all right? Uh, the first thing your runtime has to do is ask the operating system for some memory. Once we have that memory, then it's a question of memory distribution. I have to burp, excuse me. So the runtime determines where memory for a particular variable object function lives, all right? Then there's memory strategies. The runtime is what decides what goes on stack and what goes on heap memory, all right? And then finally, when we're done, using some memory, we got to garbage collect it. Now, not all languages have garbage collectors, but often this is part of the process. So that's memory management. Responsibility number two is code execution. So here's the thing. It doesn't matter if you're using a compiled language or an interpreted one. Eventually it's all got to turn into zeros and ones. Here's how it works. First of all, compilers are not part of a runtime. Uh, that's the thing that happens beforehand, but in the case of interpreted languages, what actually happens? Well, the first thing is that the runtime will parse your code and turn it into something called an abstract syntax tree. Kind of looks like this, all right? Then that gets translated into something called bytecode. This is not binary, right? This looks different, right? But it's something that can be executed by another program. And often this is called a virtual machine, not, the, not like VirtualBox. It's a different kind of virtual machine. Don't get me started. And this is what actually executes the code, all right? And typically this is literally just like a C or a C++ program, all right? And that's how eventually your code gets, gets zeroed and one. So that's code execution. Where did it go? I keep losing my notes. The third responsibility is all about typing. So if you have a strictly type language, right? The runtime is going to be responsible for enforcing this, right? And in the case of a dynamically typed language like vanilla JavaScript, this is actually what handles those weird, like truthy, falsy things that everyone loves slash hates about JavaScript. Like the runtime is what dictates that zero equals false for some reason. Then there's error handling, all right? What happens when shit goes wrong? Well, the first thing it'll do is it tries to find a rescue block, right? If this is a try catch kind of situation, it'll stop there, right? And it'll keep going up the stack until it reaches the very top. The fifth responsibility is all about concurrency support. So the runtime is what will create, manage, and delete threads in the case of languages that are multi-threaded. But what about something that doesn't do multi-threading? Say, for example, JavaScript runtimes in the browser. Well, in this case, the concurrency support is all about the event loop, all right? And allowing you to run things asynchronously, right? That's what we're talking about when we say concurrency support in a, lot, in a language like JavaScript. Okay, what are we on, six? Six, yes. Responsibility number six is standard library support. What do you just get out of the box with the language, all right? This will be things like methods on arrays and strings and numbers, right? Uh, parse int, serialization, math functions, stuff like that, all right? What do you get out of the box? Responsibility number seven is platform abstraction. Now, this is a big one. So as an example, back in the early 90s when Java was released, it had a big selling point, which was write once, run 
everywhere, all right? This is a really important feature of modern runtimes, all right? Is that abstracting away of differences between operating systems. The last responsibility is security enforcement, all right? Think about JavaScript in the browser, all right? There's a reason it can't just execute code on your host machine. It can't access files, right? It's It's got limited network connection capabilities, right? This is very important. In fact, when this is not done properly, shit goes wrong. For example, back in the 90s, once again, we're talking about Java. Java applets, one of the number one concerns that I think really was the downfall of Java applets was that they were often granted just an insane amount of privilege on the host machine, all right? I imagine if a website today was like, hey, can I have unfettered access to your host system? You'd be like, geez, buy me a drink first. So those are the eight major responsibilities of a runtime. I'm sure there's some runtimes that do different things and work a little bit differently, but I think that's generally a good overview, right? We're talking about memory management, execution, type enforcement, exception handling, uh, concurrency support, standard platform abstraction, and security enforcement. That's a lot to do. Now, there are a lot of other terms that are kind of used in the same vein as runtime or seem to have shared responsibilities. And honestly, between different languages, it gets extra confusing, especially when we're talking about languages that use just-in-time compilation, because those actually involve interpreters and compilers. It's weird. Anyways, I don't have time to talk about these in detail in this video because I have to run off to class, but I hope you felt like you learned something. That's runtimes. times.